What's up, everybody? It's Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net, and welcome to part two of our 2021 Australian Open men's final analysis between Novak Djokovic and Daniil Medvedev. To find out how Djokovic beat Medvedev in straight sets, stay tuned because it's coming up next. All right, so we're gonna start here by looking at some points of Medvedev's forehand and how Djokovic was able to take it apart. There are some technical flaws in the Medvedev forehand that Djokovic exploited in this match. So let's jump into the points. All right, so in the first point here, we've got Medvedev serving on the far side, Djokovic returning on the near side, deuce court, right? Medvedev serves, nice second. Djokovic does a good job here right off the bat, attacking a little bit with that backhand. Medvedev plays a strong backhand and then rips this forehand right here. So just go back for a second here. So this ball's coming in and Medvedev's loading up and getting ready to attack. But this is kind of the issue with the Medvedev forehand besides you know, the take back is the contact point. So Medvedev tends to make contact late on his forehand and he gets away with it most of the time or against most players, but he really struggled with it here against Djokovic. We can see the result of this ball is an aggressive shot but then he sort of has to follow through. And as he follows through, he has to really lift up with that elbow to try to get the depth because the contact's a little too far back, okay? So that's a technical flaw that can be exploited. Now he hits this really aggressively and Djokovic weathers the storm and takes that one down the line, right? So let's come back. Djokovic weathers the big shot from Medvedev, takes it up the line. Medvedev hits deep. And this is the one that costs Medvedev right here. This is the first forehand Medvedev hits in this point where the technique is an issue. So Djokovic hits the backhand short. Medvedev again here with the late contact point, right? So we'll just zoom in for a second. He's jammed up. The contact point's late and Djokovic's ball is short. So there's no reason the contact should be so far back. It shouldn't happen. He ends up hitting here now short in zone two. And again, the late contact point caused Medvedev to hit the ball short right here in zone two. As soon as that ball lands in zone two, Djokovic now has the opportunity to get aggressive against you because you're not pushing him back. If you're not pushing Djokovic back, he's gonna get on offense and get aggressive, okay? He does that with depth this time. So just because you get a short ball, right here, you know, and you receive this, it doesn't mean you have to hit left to right in the court, and Djokovic knows that. If he wants to go to the sidelines, he can, but he's gonna go down the line deep, right, and probe that Medvedev forehand just a little bit more. So look at Medvedev here, on the back foot, late contact point. Probably gonna end up hitting something weak or short here. Let's see what actually happens, though. So he does what he tends to do, and what Medvedev tends to do when he gets these late contact points is he really follows through high with the elbow like this. It's a compensation for the bad contact point. He gets away with it against a lot of players, but with how good Djokovic is playing and where his game is at, he can't get away with this, doing this, to beat Djokovic. It's not gonna work. So this one is the first one here where it's really weak and short, and it's just sitting up. The fact that the ball is just sitting there puffy for Djokovic is the result of the late contact point and this excessive high follow through with the elbow. So as soon as this sits up like this, Djokovic can now attack with his forehand and he does. And then he forces the air right there. So just go back for one second. Djokovic gets something that sits. As soon as he gets a ball that's not threatening him and not pushing him back and doing damage, he will attack you, especially on the forehand now. He does it here. We have another late contact point from Medvedev, and he just kind of flubs his arm over his hand to try to get the ball in, and then ends up making the air, and Djokovic forces that air. Let's move on to the next point now. All right, so in this point, we've got Djokovic serving on the far side, Medvedev returning on the near side. Second serve, right? Medvedev takes the ball down the line here to try to attack. Djokovic back down the line. And again, he probes that forehand that we just talked about, right? So Medvedev goes down the line and Djokovic decides he's gonna go right back down the line to probe that forehand of Medvedev and test that forehand. And what do we see from Medvedev again here? We've got this late contact point on the forehand and we just talked about that late contact point. A lot of times your ball can sit up on your opponent's side after it hits their side. And if it does that, like it does right here, that's all Djokovic needs is a ball that sits up to get on top of it and drive it and attack you. He goes to a small target, forces a short ball, 
and then finishes the point. Let's just take one more look at that real quick. Down the line by Medvedev. At this point, Djokovic is already probing and picking apart his forehand, and he does it right here. He gets this late contact point, the super high finish, which means with this finish, unless you're Nadal, the ball's gonna sit up, and it sits up for Djokovic here. All he needs is one look and one opportunity to really damage you and take control of the point. He takes it here with a small target, Medvedev on defense. And here's something you can learn from Medvedev, right? And we've talked about this in past videos here. But Medvedev is in such a bad position back here defensively, right? Djokovic has got a short sitter that's landing in zone two. He's gonna make a decision on where he's gonna go before Djokovic even hits the ball. So he's either gonna go this way or he's gonna go this way. Let's see what he does with the feet here. He's planting his left foot, all right? before Djokovic is making contact with the ball well before, and he's going in this direction. That's something you can learn in terms of your anticipation skills. Go before the other guy hits if you're in this bad of a situation, okay? Just make a decision, left or right. If you guess right, you're hopefully in a good spot. So Medvedev comes over, Djokovic hits a missile forehand. That was a huge forehand. Here's another thing you can learn about anticipation. Look at Medvedev here, right? Look at the body position. His body right now is very closed off. If his body was more open to the net, it would suggest that he has the ability to go cross court. But because his body is so closed like this, it means it's gonna be extremely difficult for him to go cross court and do that with any kind of pace, okay? He's not gonna be able to get power on the shot. Djokovic knows that and knows it's a scramble position. So Djokovic is moving in this direction. Look at his feet. He knows Medvedev's gonna be going down the line, so he's covering line in this situation, and it's an easy volley for the winner in the finish. In part one of this series, we talked about Djokovic hitting deep in zone three on his return of serve. 46% of all his returns landed in zone three. Medvedev just 27%. What about the rest of the shots? What about the rest of the ground strokes? What did those numbers look like? So what percentage of Djokovic's shots landed in the deepest part of the court in zone three in this match? We had him at 39% of all of his shots landing in zone three, which is pretty normal for him. That's a really high number for any player, but for him, it's pretty normal. Medvedev was just at 29% of his shots landing in zone three. So Djokovic, again, superior depth compared to Medvedev in this match. All right, so let's jump into the first point now and look at Djokovic's depth. We got Djokovic here serving on the near side, Medvedev returning on the far side. First serve up the tee, right? Gets Medvedev on the stretch. He's lunging for the ball, which should imply a weaker return, but let's see. It's short. We get a zone one ball here, which is exactly what Djokovic wants. So really short here inside zone one. That gives Djokovic the opportunity to step around and hit a forehand, right? Because the return is really short. First ball, zone three. Second ball, zone three. Third ball, zone three. Just over and over again. So let's slow this down and look at it, though. Great serve placement. First ball. Doesn't necessarily, you know, he's not overpowering him, but he's maneuvering him and getting the ball deep so that Medvedev just can't attack him from this position. That's kind of the point. Maneuver him and try to force a short ball. Medvedev plays short into zone two, which is exactly what Djokovic wants. Playing balls in zone two, that's not gonna back Djokovic up in this position. He's right on top of the baseline, able to take time by hitting deep. Hits another ball here, another backhand deep. And he kind of wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Medvedev backhand to backhand and basically tell him too, your backhand's your strength, but I'm gonna be better than you on your own shot and your best shot. I'm gonna break you down backhand to backhand. Medvedev again hits short in zone two, right? So Djokovic superior depth. Zone two here for Medvedev. Djokovic goes line extremely deep. This one's so deep, right? Look where that is. Back of zone three right here, deepest part of the court. And then on top of that, we talked about this earlier, but Medvedev's having to move from one side of the court to the other side of the court to cover the shot, which is difficult. So zone three, down the line, and then that forces the air. Let's move on to the next point now. All right, so we've got Djokovic serving on the far side, Medvedev returning on the near side. Let's see what happens in this point. Djokovic with a very nice first serve placement there. Gets Medvedev kind of instantly lunging and reaching for the ball. And because he's lunging and reaching right off the bat, it's probably going to be a weaker or shorter return. Let's see what Djokovic gets from this. You can see it lands here short in zone two, right? So that's obviously not what Medvedev wants. 
Djokovic has a very aggressive position inside the baseline now in zone three because the return was shorter, but that was set up by the serve, right? Takes the forehand, and this is a big one. This is really gonna hurt people, right? It's when you're taking shots deep in zone three, so we talked about his depth, but also to a small target. It's sort of the double whammy. If you do those two things together, you really have your opponent in deep trouble. Severe damage there. Look what Medvedev does though, right? Let's come back for a second here. Medvedev, from this position, he's basically just trying to scoop up on his forehand and try to establish depth if he can, because he can't get any pace on it, right? So he pops it up, tries to get depth. Djokovic crushes another forehand right there. So we come back, Djokovic loading up, takes it just below shoulder height, deep in zone three again here, big forehand. Medvedev again in that lunging, reaching situation. Short ball again, and Djokovic again. If you look at the dots on the screen, right? Where are Medvedev's and where are Djokovic's? Every Djokovic ball, zone three. Every Medvedev ball, zone two or zone one. He could not counter that depth. Late contact there, and then he's forced into the air as Djokovic comes to the net. So let's just watch this here. See the contact point, right? A little far back. He's unable to rotate his body. He's trying to go cross court, but the ball's too far back for him to be able to do that. The contact, he can't do it. And then he ends up making the mistake. So if there's one thing that we know about Djokovic, it's that good isn't good enough. And what I mean by that is that in this event, he got more free points and aces than he's ever gotten before at the Australian Open. He made some technical and tactical changes to his game that have improved his serve and improved his forehand. In the past, a lot of times, Djokovic would take a serve plus one backhand as the first shot in the point. In this match, he took 60% of his serve plus ones as forehands. So again, for Djokovic, good isn't good enough. He's always looking to improve and make changes during the off season, and he definitely did that again this year. Let's jump in and look at some points now. All right, so in the first point, we've got Djokovic on the near side serving here, and we've got Medvedev on the far side returning. Let's see what happens. Very nice wide slice serve. That does damage to Medvedev right away. We've got Medvedev over here reaching and lunging for the ball, which means it's gonna be a slice. From this position, it's probably gonna be a high slice because he's a little deeper in the court and he's gonna to have to float it if he wants to get any depth on the shot. So let's see what happens. He does float that. And what that gives Djokovic time to do, right? Djokovic has all day to step around what would be a backhand here in this position and now he can easily take a forehand and step around and do damage or hit a winner with that. And that's exactly what he does. Let's go back for a second here. Weak slice. Djokovic recognizes that and set it up with the great serve. And there's the plus one forehand and the finish. That's something in the past where Djokovic may take a backhand and be comfortable taking a backhand, but now he's making the decision to step around and hit forehands on these weak floating balls. Let's move on to the next point now. We've got Djokovic serving again here on the near side, but ad side and Medvedev returning on the far side. Let's see what happens. Again, nice serve, beautiful first serve. Could be a little closer to the tee, right, potentially, but he forces Medvedev, again, into this slice from a deep position. If the slice is coming from these deeper positions, you're gonna have to float it a little bit to try to get it deep, which means it's gonna sit up, all right? It's gonna be hard to get it low. It sits up, Djokovic immediately Moves around what could be a backhand, right? Moves around, here we go. Taking that big forehand, loading up. Clearly he's going down the line from this position. He's not gonna be going cross court. And finishes with the winner right there. Let's just look at it one more time quick. Beautiful serve, floating return. Djokovic recognizes that floating return and knows he's got time to step around and finishes with the one, two right there. All right, that wraps it up for part two of our men's Australian Open finals analysis between Novak Djokovic and Daniil Medvedev. If you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash it like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. We'll see you next time.